Hello creators. This video is if in case you missed our class on March, March 28th, or if you need a refresher from what we did on March 28th, I have audition open right now. And I have audition open and I haven't done a thing. We haven't dropped a file in. We haven't created a session or anything like that. The first thing that I'm going to do is draw attention to the user interface. Um, up in the very upper left, top left, is multi-track and waveform. And then your files will appear in here. Uh, in this panel, there is metadata, markers, and the effects rack. Let's open the effects rack and keep that open for right now. And then down here will be some history. And I'm going to show you a couple of different things here. The first thing that we're going to do is click on the multi-track button up here. And we're going to create a session. So the first thing that comes up is this little dialog box that asks us to name the session. And we'll just call it March 28th. You can call it whatever you want. And then it's going to ask you, where do you want to put this? So this is kind of important. So here's my drive. I'm, today, I'm going to put it in downloads. Uh, I think I'll create a folder. And we'll call it March 28th for consistency. And I'm going to say choose. Oh, you don't see that. It's not on the screen. I'm going to choose, say choose. Oh, and I'm in the way. Sorry about that. And it's now pointed there. We haven't done it. We haven't finished it yet. We just told it where we want it to go. We named it. We told it where we want it to go. We're not going to use a template at this point. And if this is set differently, it might be set at 48, the sample rate. That is, if you are doing a video, you should be there. For our purposes, we're going to go to 44100. And this may be up at 32, the bit depth. We're going to go to 16. And this may be set to stereo, but we're going to choose mono. So let's just take a look at that again. We named the file. We told it where we wanted it to go. In this case, I'm putting it in a folder in downloads. And we're going to use no none on template. We're at sample rate 44, 100, 16 bit depth and mono. And we're going to hit OK. And now all of a sudden we have this multi-track session ready to dump files in, record, whatever, and um, edit. So in the class the other day, we had some files that were available from my OneDrive and then I put them in uh, Blackboard. Uh, so you should be able to get those again through the link that I gave you. I think I did it in an email too. I think I did it like three different ways. Um, <clears throat> and it was in a folder. Um, yeah, class lesson, March 28th. And the only file we ended up using, there was eight of them, right? The, the only file we ended up using was audio C plat two. So let's take that and I'm, dragging it and dropping it right in track one. So this is going to pop up and say the sample rate of the file you're trying to put in here doesn't match the sample rate of the session that you chose. We chose 44, 100, 16 bit. This file I'm putting in there doesn't match that. So it's going to convert it. And that's what this box is saying. And I'm going to say, okay. And it's going to chug away. 5%, 6%, 7%. It takes a little bit, but it's converting that file so it conforms with this session that we've created, the parameters, the specifications of this session. Maybe I'll play some music while that's happening. First of all, we'll give ourselves some applause. It, it, it loaded. So, okay, so there's an audio file, and all this is is one person talking. So it's, think of it as 
uh, a narration file. Welcome to the Platinum Passport Podcast. Uh, I am so excited. Now, this happens to be a client of mine. And I actually did edit this. There was uh, another, there was a guest here as well. So I put the guest on a different track. But let's just focus on this one dialogue, this one audio recording uh, of this uh, woman down in the Carolinas. One thing I want to show you right off the bat is that we're not looking at the entire file. We're looking at 25, 30 seconds of the file, right? Um, and this file is 50 minutes. 50 minutes long. So the way I'm going to zoom out is on my keyboard, I'm going to hit the minus button. There's ways to do this with the mouse. There's ways to do this with the keypad, but I keep it simple. And I'm just tapping on that minus button and I'm going all the way out to 50 minutes. There we go. There's the entire audio file right there. One thing I want you to know note right now is that <clears throat> there's a little volume control. It's always in the far left-hand bottom corner of the track. And when it turns into this little hand with the two arrows, if I click on that and now drag it this way, I can increase the volume of that entire track. That's clip. That's, that's going to sound horrible. I'm not even going to play it back but I can make it really quiet or I can make it super loud or I'm just going to bring it up to around there and I'm just going visually. I'm just looking at it saying, you know what? Now I can put the, I've got this, this is the toolbar up here, by the way, and I've got the time selection tool selected right here. So anywhere I can put the uh, playhead. That you discover. I can move it over here if I want the playhead. and skincare because I think a lot of people now I'm playing and stopping the play button by hitting the space oh, bar think about oh. so it's here oh. <clears throat> there's play kind of shallow <laughs> there's pause but I can do that those two functions just by hitting the space bar <laughs> so I can start and stop at any time I want by hitting the space bar do not have to go to these controls here this is the playhead controls um, just so you know. Now, <clears throat> one thing, if as we look at that file right off the bat, uh, and everybody in class got this on, uh, the other day, was that it needs to be compressed. There are parts of this file that are very loud, or let's say louder in volume, and there are parts that are really soft. So that's not really good to listen to, and it's much better if... Every, not every single syllable, but for the most part, uh, there is there aren't these um, lowering in volume throughout the narration. So the first effect I want to show you is compression. And we're not going to do it here in multi-track, and there's a reason why. And I'll I'll explain it now. When we compress the file, we're going to actually see this um, change. We're going to see this, uh, this file change, this track. And we're going to see that compression. If we do it here in multi-track, we will not see that. So we're going to go into the waveform editor. Now, there's two ways to do it when you're on a track. And by the way, I have this track selected right now because this color is highlighted. Let me just show you that if I click on track two, now I'm dealing with track two, now I'm dealing with track three. So let's go back and we have track one selected. And I can either double click in here or I can go to waveform. So that's waveform. This is going back to multi-track and I'm gonna do it the other way. I'm gonna double click. I double clicked in the track and now I'm in the waveform editor. Uh, let's not deal with that down below for right now, but there it is. And you can see the peaks and valleys here. So what we'll do is we will go up to or well, uh, you can't see my, uh, file and edit and effects up there, but, 
um, I'm, I'm clicking on, oh, you can see it, it's dropping down a little bit. Okay, so I, I went into effects across the top and I'm going into amplitude and compression and I'm gonna select dynamics. And this dialog box is gonna open up. Let's unclick auto gate, let's unclick expander if they happen to be cl clicked on and click compressor. So let's use the compressor. And this is usually defaulted around 20 dB, minus 20 dB, let's leave it there. But if this is at one, which it might be for default, let's crank this up to four. And you can do that by manually hitting the button or you can click in here and change the value to four. Let's not worry about these two buttons, the attack and the release. And we'll leave the makeup game where it's defaulted. Usually it's defaulted around there. And we're going to hit the apply button. There. Now you can see it's a lot more even. It has been compressed. Some of the lower volume areas have been brought up and some of the higher volume areas have been brought down. Now we did that in waveform. Now, when we go back to multi-track up here, it shows that way. It shows those changes visually, <laughs> that's what I should say, okay? So that track now looks a lot more even than it did. Now, <clears throat> the issue with going and doing this in waveform is that this is considered destructive editing. After I close this session out, and I come back in, <clears throat> I cannot change it back to the way it was. It's destructive editing when you are in the waveform view. Back in multi-track, if I were to make the effect here and compress it, we could get the same effect, but we will not see that compression. And I really feel it's important to see the compression, especially in the beginning. So that's why we jumped out of multi-track into waveform and then back into multi-track. I hope that makes sense. Hit me up in class if that is not clear or watch this video back and see if you can, um, see if it makes sense to you. Now, right away, I think I'm gonna, overall, I'm gonna increase the volume there again. I think I'm gonna bring it up to right around there and I'm gonna play by hitting the space bar. It's so, so important because it increases your confidence. It allows them to feel even more. Down here are, is my level. This is a mono file, so I only have one track here and I only have one level, but it's it's coming in around six, are, um, minus six around here. It's, it's not going into the red. Engaged in life and all of those things are part of the beauty. Still, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a limiter on there. So what I'm now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it that at no point shall you get any louder than this value. And this effect we will do here in multi-track. I, I don't necessarily feel that you have to go back into waveform for every edit that you make. I think the compression one is the most important and it's the one that you're not going to be able to change. However, here in multi-track, when we make the effect happen here, we will be able to change it. It's great. This is a great, 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 great feature. Did I say great enough? So we can put an effect on here by uh, a couple of different ways. We can go back up to my effects um, menu item, drop it down. I have all my effects right here. Or we can go right in here and click on the, the white arrow to the right of that panel. And let's choose amplitude and compression and hard limiter. And what I'm gonna do is that was coming in around minus six. Let's, let's pull it back to minus 12, which is a safe range. So again, I'm dragging this button. However, you could just go in here and change the value to negative 12. Don't ask me why I like to use the buttons.
we're going to leave the input boost at default, which is zero. Don't worry about this look ahead and release time. And by the way, <clears throat> I can now play the file and toggle the effect on and off as I'm listening to it. I love this feature in Audition. Autologist to help me to, you know, be able so to can get see, antibiotics and all of that to help. To you see, I hammered it right at 12, right? To clear up my skin. Now watch but when I, to this now watch when I toggle it off. I'll do it as I'm playing. To date, I still struggle with skin issues, which is what led me to you. <laughs> but I think that in particular for young people, um, when they have. And you can see when I turn that button back on, just an on and off button for the effect, I can listen real time and see what I'm getting. And I think that's a great feature. Now, now that I've created that effect, it's over here. I can close this dialog box. That Not effect that is taking place. Or, I can now, you know, those... <clears throat> I can now toggle it on and off here. Skin conditions, and it's the first thing that people see. There is a self consciousness that comes along with. So I like that limit. I like that hard limit. It's going to really do a lot to keep this very consistent and easy to listen to. Now I can, at any time, even after I close this program and come back five days later. This is um, non-destructive, and I can go in here and I can edit the. If I can remove it if I want, or I can edit this effect. I can go back in and pull that box open again and change it. It's just a beautiful thing. And then I have all these panels here. I can put as many effects on there as I like. Many, 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 many effects. For instance, let's go into uh, row number two. And let's put a reverb on there. Now, you get many choices here with reverb. Um, let's just, for the heck of it, because we did this in class, click on full reverb. And it's going to ask you uh, this question. Just say yes to it. Um, it's about latency. It's about playback. And it's about rendering and things like that. So we're just going to say OK. Now, I get this very granular uh, dialogue box, right? I, I, there's a lot I can do in here to, to this particular setting. And by the way, up here, when you see presets, um, click on this down arrow and you will see that for all these effects, Audition has put these presets in there. So you may not even have to go in there and do the granular controls. You may find one that you like. Now, this is kind of good. Chamber pot, church, Empty living room, football referee, they're all different kinds of reverb to make something or someone sound like they are outdoors or they're in a big hall or a small hall. Um, this cracks me up, chamber pot, the king's bathroom. Let's just, for the heck of it, let's go with great hall. And that's typically a big room. So let's play that file. I'm hitting again the space bar. You could go down here and hit the play bar if you want it. Whoa. Whoa. That is a big, big hall she's in. Um, now, I could go in there and change the values of great hall. Let's choose something else. That was just a little too much for me. Let's do chamber pot. What the heck? Um, really help people... I'm not sure what happened there. Hold on. Right tools and think, make the, you know, find the right um, products to help them is so, so important because it increases their confidence. It allows them to feel even more. Um, you saw I toggled that off there. Um, but anyway, this is something to get to know and to mess around with and to explore because there are times when you want to put reverb certainly in a musical situation you reverb is used a lot on vocals um, it's used a lot on instrumentation on guitars but it can also be used in a storytelling narrative not necessarily a podcast like this but if you were doing a project and you wanted to just make one section of it sound different you could 
And let's actually, you know what, let's actually do something like that. I'm going to click away from that dialog box. Uh, right now I have full reverb toggled off, so we will not hear it. But let me show you how to split a clip. And if you wanted to put an effect on just part of this dialog, um, one of the strategies is to take this razor blade again. Up, we're up here at the toolbar, and this is the razor blade. So we're going to grab this razor blade. Now you can see <clears throat> the icon turns to a razor blade. And let's just zoom in. So I'm going to hit the plus key. I could be down here using these controls here, but I, it's just keyboard shortcuts are really good to get um, used to using. They just make everything so much easier. So she's just saying, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. She's just agreeing with her guest right here. Um, let's get a part where she's talking. Okay, so I don't know what she's saying there, but I just cut that track, and I'm going to cut this side of the track. So I have now separated this. Let me show you that this is now its own little clip, and I can even move it onto this track and select this track. I don't have to. I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to show you another keyboard shortcut, or tell you another sh keyboard shortcut, which is Command-Z, and that's on a Mac. Command-Z will pop you back up and undo your last edit. And you also have a history here, too, and you can go down in here. You see where I used the razor. You see where I added the clip. You could click in here and go back in time Again, non-destructive editing, really good feature. So I have this little section here. Let's hear what she's saying there, shall we? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so let's put an effect on that. Now, I have to have this track selected, first of all, and I have to have this highlighted. If I'm here, I'm going to put it on this part of it. If I'm here, I'm going to put it on that part of it. So I want to go here. Now, when we go back down to the effects rack, we had this set so that it was the entire track. And if I do anything right now with this selected, it is going to be the entire track, no matter what I have selected here. So we're going to go to clip effects. So now that I'm in clip effects, you see that those other ones disappeared. And I can go into number one here and place an effect just on this clip. So let's do that. Let's click in here. Let's go to what's special distortion. Ooh. All right. Well, this is going to sound horrible, but let's choose it. And I'm just going to move this away and hit the space bar so I can play it. That is incredible. So you are being prepared even. And that's the default. Let's see what we got here. Green room, ooh, infinite distortion. This is going to sound horrible. At that time. Whoa, sorry about that. Maximum pain. What's snakeskin? Let's try that. For what you were going to go on to do. Um, and Not a very uh, flattering effect, is it? Tell you what, we don't like it. We're going to remove it. Boink, go bite. Okay, now we're going to go back into the effect rack there. And let's go back to uh, oh, stereo imagery. Let's go to vocal enhancer. I'm in special in here. Let's see what we get. And life, because now you currently have your own company. Um, How did you make that decision? That seemed to make it, oh, that made it a lot harsher, harsher, harsher. So I think what it did was it eliminated the low tones. I don't like that one either. Goodbye. Remove. All right, let's just go back to reverb, shall we? Full reverb. It's going to ask me that stupid question again. And let's go church. She's in church.
Oh my goodness, that is incredible. So you were being prepared. Okay, so we now have put an effect on just this clip. If I want to go back and do something to the entire track, I've got to go back here and go to track effects there. So we did a couple of other things in, um, in class. And one of them was we, re we recorded too. So let me show you a couple of things about these buttons right up here. I'm going to mute this track so that we don't hear it if we pl if we hit the play button anymore. So I'm going to hit the M right there. And you can see that it grayed out. So when I take the mute button off, you can see it and hear it. But when I go like this and apply the mute button and hit play, we're not hearing it. You can see it. The level's here. But we can no longer hear it. Because I want to... I want to record something on this track. So that's the other thing we did. We set up the ATR2100, those USB microphones that we have in the white boxes, the ones that are both uh, digital and they're analog. We use the analog uh, feature and we plugged it into the Mac, my, the Mac, the instructor's Mac. And to record, you have to hit the record button and you are arming the record button and when you hit this you get a level there but I have my my audio settings set up wonky so I'm gonna re I'm gonna come in with a feedback loop so I'm not gonna do that but if you want to get your level down here you click there you can see there's a lot of noise in my room And my room, this room is quiet. This is really quiet. It could be the heater on, on uh, blowing out air up here. But you can see that that's the value of using headphones. It's the value of uh, having professional equipment as you get to really understand room ambience. And with that being said, I'm about to hit the record button. And we recommend that whenever you record anything that you have everyone be, be perfectly silent that may be around you. You try to choose the best room you can acoustically. You try to, you try to choose a quiet room if that's what you're going after. You know, if, if there's some purpose in the story that you need ambience, like glasses clinking or people talking like you're in a cafe, then of course you need that or you need to add that in later as an effect. But right now I want quiet and I want as quiet as possible. But there may be a noise, and we know there is a noise because we just saw it. So I'm going to recommend that you always get 10 seconds of silence or room ambience whenever you record. So let's get the playhead back here. Let's hit record. Okay, uh, that was about 10 seconds, and now I am speaking into the microphone. This microphone, by the way, is an analog microphone, and it's connected via XLR to my Focusrite audio interface, and then it's going from there into my MacBook Pro. So it's taking an analog signal, the Focusrite unit, the interface is converting it into digital, digital and it's being recognized by this program so i'll stop it for a second and <coughs> excuse me the way that you set up your audio channels is you go into adobe audition at uh, along your file menu across the top and you go into settings i know you can't see the very tip of that but you go into settings and you go into audio hardware I have to hit stop to make that happen. Settings, audio hardware. And here you see that, oh, I was just recording for my MacBook Pro. How do you like them apples? All right, there's my interface right there. So there's a good lesson right there. This is a good lesson right there, uh, a teaching moment. Always check your input.
I didn't before I started this video. And I started recording using the wrong microphone. <laughs> How do you like that? So now the input is the Scarlet Solo. And if I want to come back out of that to monitor, I'm going to choose that as my output. And I'm going to hit OK. OK, so now we're going to see this. Is, this waveform is going to change a little bit next time. We're, now when I record next. Because that signal's too low. I should have known that right away. OK, I'm going to hit record again. And now it is this microphone. Testing, one, two, three. Check, one, two, three. Test, one, two, three. Yeah, that's way better. It's a better signal. More better, as we used to say in Quincy. Us Quincy kids. Okay. Let's stop that right there. And if I play that back, are you going to hear that? You hear my crummy mouth noise there. see what this sound like yeah <laughs> you can hear this part with my computer microphone my two thousand dollar laptop that has a two dollar microphone okay so we just recorded something on this track and you can record directly into audition just like you can in any other program audacity and pro tools i know uh we have a someone in class who uses pro tools we have someone in class who uses fl we have another person that uses something else and it's all fine to use that uh, uh, those other editing tools. The problem in this class is going to be I'm not going to be able to show everybody everything that they use. So that's why we're sticking with Audition. But I think it's important to get to know Audition, especially if you're in the digital media program, because you're going to be using Premiere Pro. And Premiere Pro is the video, you know, the 800-pound gorilla in the video world. But Audition is equally important for the audio side and premiere pro has a way that it shakes hands with audition you can you can be in a, a a video production pull audition up with all of its features change the audio and dump that right back to premiere pro so it's very very powerful and it's good to know um i think i'll end it there but th those are some of the basics and we're going to continue and i hope this is helpful to all of you um, it's a great class. We have a lot of creative people and people are gaining on it, uh, every, after every class. So, uh, flex, be proud.